Here's a question for you. When is a band not a band? When it's a fictional one created for TV. But does that preclude it from having a hit? No way. In August 2023, Mental Floss published an article called 11 Fictional Bands Who Scored Very Real Hit Songs, citing creations such as The Archies with Sugar Sugar and The Wonders with That Thing You Do. And then came one that I remembered from my own teenage years. But before I go any further, it's time for you to do that thing you do and like, subscribe and comment. Your encouragement means the world to me and thank you for just checking out this video. Back in 1992, there was a TV show that really had me from episode one. It was all that I wanted in a new show. Aspiring musicians, a dose of teenage angst, catchy songs, all put together in an appealing early 90s Aaron Spelling package. Even the original theme song was a winner, all about friendship. And that friendship was a ragtag group of people who would come together to form a band. The fictional band was called The Heights, and they would have a number one hit with their debut single. Want to know more? Well, I hope you do. So let's get into this episode of Should Have Been On The Album. The Heights was a short-lived American television drama series created by Aaron Spelling and Cheryl Molina. You may recognize the name Aaron Spelling from other shows that he produced. Dynasty, The Love Boat, Heart to Heart, Charlie's Angels, Melrose Place, Beverly Hills 90210. Yep, the guy had some serious form when it came to TV shows. Set in the Heights neighborhood of Los Angeles, the series revolved around the lives and struggles of a group of young adults pursuing their music dreams while being faced with various personal and professional challenges. The ensemble cast included actors such as Jamie Waters, Charlotte Ross, Zachary Throne, Sean David Thompson, and Alex Desire, amongst others. One of the key aspects of The Heights was its incorporation of original music performed by the cast, including the show's theme song, How Do You Talk To An Angel, which became a chart-topping hit. The song reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in November 1992. Yet despite the success of the theme song, The Height was met with mixed reviews. While it was praised for its approach to integrating music into the narrative, it was criticised for its formulaic plotlines and character development. Unfortunately, The Height struggled with viewership, leading to its cancellation after only one season, leaving fans without closure for the characters and storylines, and with one episode completely unaired. A similar fate would befall The Height's second single, and before too long, they were left to being a minor blip on TV and chart history. Still, you can't really look past the number one hit, right? Look, I own both the original soundtrack and the single of How Do You Talk To An Angel? And this is where we're going to find our B-side. A little track called Walkin' Nerve. Walkin' Nerve was originally written by Nils Lovgren, an American multi-instrumentalist who has worked with high-profile artists like Neil Young, Lou Reed, Bruce Springsteen, Ringo Starr and Lou Graham, just to name a few. The song came out on his album Silver Lining in 1991, a year before The Heights was aired and the original recording also featured Ringo Starr on drums. It was released as a single and was also on the Ringo Starr and his all-star band anthology. On the Heights version, however, it is performed by Sean David Thompson on lead vocals with a lineup of session musicians. Lyrically, the song is sung from a teenager's perspective, showing off his bravado. But behind the bravado is a sense of confusion and angst. And there's also the need for greater connection. I'm still looking for a love, sir. I am a walking nerve. But what's a walking nerve? Well, there's not a lot of answers online, but for me, it's the explanation of how you're feeling inside when you're constantly on edge. It's a kind of like a great description for living with anxiety. A person who is like a walking nerve. Walking Nerve is described as a gritty rocker by AllMusic.com, 
and both versions share a similar blues orientated approach. However, the Heights version is a little bit more subdued, but it still rocks. The vocals by Thompson are Bon Jovi-like, and he's got a howl that he's definitely picked up from 80s hair bands. He sells the song like he means it, and he's living it. It's a tight and punchy production, and a hell of a lot of fun to listen to. So, does it belong on the soundtrack? Well, while all of the other songs on the album were featured in the show's episodes, I couldn't find Walking Nerve in one. So, let's say, just for argument's sake, that Walking Nerve was to feature in an upcoming episode. Is there a place for it on the soundtrack? First of all, Walking Nerve is a great song. It's a cracker, and it certainly stacks up against the others on the soundtrack. And the soundtrack has some big name in the songwriters, Jimmy Barnes, Diesel, Jonathan Kane from Journey, as well as that number one hit. However, a good half of the album is made up of original songs written by the actors in the show. So Hot, Natalie, The Man You Used To Be, Joanne, and Strongest Man Alive are all courtesy of the cast. And for me, this is where some of the weakness creeps into the album, but they're still good songs. I think they also tried to meter out the lead vocal duties on the soundtrack so that there's a fair share across the board. The only one who doesn't get a lead song is Cheryl Pollock, but she isn't listed as a lead vocalist. In light of trying to balance out the vocal duties, that's a possibility to why Walk and Nerve didn't get a spot. Sean David Thompson already sings on three songs, but Jamie Waters does get four. Alex Desaire sings on three, with Zachary Throne on two, and Ken Garita and Charlotte Ross on just one each. So maybe the balance thing is just a moot point. It really is hard to nominate a bad song to replace because there's quite an eclectic collection of tracks here. For me, Joanne is the weaker of the collection, as well as the yin and yang approach of common ground slash battleground, which just seems a little too much. In all honesty, you could dump battleground for walking nerve. In the end, I think put it on as a 15th track Pick a spot, put it in. The soundtrack should be a document of the whole show. And I think to experience it all, even in the short life that the Heights had, would have been better. So there you have it. It's a little slice of television and chart history all rolled into one. The fact is, there have been many TV shows and movies that have garnered chart hits, whether it be theme songs or songs integral to the storylines. In March of this year, Rolling Stone published a great article called Fake Bands, Real Songs, the 50 best tunes by made-up musicians. And it's definitely worth a look too. So what do you think? Do you remember the heights and their massive and only hit? And what do you think of Walking Nerve? Make sure you drop a comment below. As always, if you have an idea for a B-side or a rare track that you think I should check out, let me know. You can also email me on should have been on the album at gmail.com. Be sure to share your thoughts and your stories. But until next time, my name is Drew, and you've been watching Should Have Been on the Album. Cheers. Should have been on the album.